Hey guys, my name is Frank. Welcome to Source It Up. Today I want to go over a quick call. Uh, honestly, would this take me like an hour and a half, right? So I went to just two stores, picked up a bunch of stuff. Um, here's one, Trivial Pursuit, $2.99. I'm going to guess on the prices, conservatively, $30. Uh, we got two textbooks here. Um, textbooks are always great. I scan them all. These are honestly more like $15 to $20 each. Ticker toys are great. If this isn't complete, this sells very well. Even if it is complete, this is a little older one. These sell very well on eBay. We got a Wii here for $12.99. And uh, it looks decent. Has a couple controllers. And the controllers by themselves are 10 bucks each. Then the nunchucks, at least $5 each. And then the system, $30 to $40 by itself. And then you got uh, a couple wires there. So pretty good. A couple of vinyls. I'm not going to go through, through those. Um, Lincoln Logs are always good. Again, if this isn't complete, these sell very well in lots, $2.99. So if I maybe have three times this amount, put it in a box, $40. You can sell that for in like a large lot of Lincoln Logs. So uh, VCR here, this is a easy $40 to $50 flip, $4.99. It's in, the reason I got this, it's in great condition. It has the remote. So um, one thing, I was going to stop getting larger stuff, but today we're getting a really, really cool shipping item that is going to help us ship large items and pack them a hundred times faster but um i'll show you guys in another video <laughs> they're basically uh foam foam corners but uh yeah so we'll see and then this here so i'm not really big on printers i'll only get them if they're in excellent condition and if they're a laser printer and if the profit's there this is 4.99 came with the wire great condition good brand um, looks sturdy and that's probably an easy $60 flip plus shipping. We got a dog silencer. It looks like uh, it was open, but everything looks excellent. $2.99. This is probably $30. Uh, Mon <laughs> Monopoly uh, Disney Edition. Um, anything Disney Edition, look it up. $2.99. Even though the box is a little messed up, it could still, most likely, if the contents are great, most likely could still be listed for good on Amazon, $40 to $50 if that's complete. Hopefully it is. Now, a lot of the games, if they're not complete, the parts sell very well. Only buy games where the parts sell well, so we can at least make our money back and a little bit of profit on eBay. So this has a little dent here, but we can sell this used on Amazon and new it, you know. The ranks on these are a little higher. Not many people sell there's so many different types of puzzles and not many people are on these listings. So you can kind of name your own price, but you never want to put it as high it is, as it is on Amazon when it's six or seven or 800,000 ranked because uh, it just won't sell. The reason why it's so high of a rank and things don't sell is because of the prices. So if you lower the price a little bit, you could still turn 399 into 30 or $40 uh, rather than the 60 or 70 that's on there. So we got an Xbox here for 499. I won't pick them up loose like this for anything more than that, most usually, um, because you don't know if they work. If they don't, we do sell lots of, of uh, broken consoles, and they do so well. It's kind of a pain to ship. I'm actually looking for a local source to possibly uh, offload these to in large quantities, because every month or two we'll get like 20 or 30. This is pretty cool. The box is a little damaged, but I love Mega Man stuff. Any older vintage kind of toys like this? Let's see what year this is. 2004. So that's actually not too new, but uh, pretty cool. So one other cool tip is this, just because it's not in shrink wrap doesn't mean it's not new. You got to look and see if there's tape on all four places that wasn't taken off because that's basically brand new factory sealed. Corners look good. Tape's on. This is brand new. Sells on Amazon for $4.99. It's an easy $20 flip. Um, I won't go with those kind of margins on eBay, but I will on Amazon, because FBA is great. $1.99, this is $30, most likely. Um, Harry Potter stuff, it doesn't scan into Amazon, but it looks like uh, the lights, everything looks in great condition. These are basically, uh, I think these are Christmas lights or some sort of lights you hang up, um, 10 light set. But old Harry Potter stuff, some of it doesn't sell, a lot of it does. This. Uh, Hopefully it does, so. Didn't look it up, but just threw it in my cart. <clears throat> $4.99, these uh, look in excellent unused condition with just an open box. Yeah, the box is open. 
but these are 40 bucks on Amazon. <coughs> Excuse me. We have Disney trivia game. Disney trivia games, regardless, 99% of them, they all do very well. Uh, this should, I, this fluctuates in price some parts of the year. Uh, these trivia games don't do very well, and then other parts they do for some reason, um, especially around Christmas time. Around Christmas time, the board games skyrocket in price. It's crazy because people want all their old games, and they're, they're like 50 times as expensive new because um, you can't find them anymore. Find the Sky. This is a learning game, a fraction game. There's none listed on Amazon, and it's a million in toys. But you know what that means? We're going to be the only one on this listing, and I'm going to take a chance on this because if it has a rank... And it's not like three million, it's one million in toys, which isn't the worst. It has sold before, and we're gonna be the only one on a listing. So that's why I buy things like that sometimes. Um, Clue Harry Potter, this is a very expensive game, $3.99. Very, hopefully this is complete. This, I'm thinking 60 bucks. Uh, we got a really nice pair of uh, Stacy Adams. These things are practically unworn. They actually, they, looks like maybe someone tried them on and walked in their kitchen floor. Like, it, there's like nowhere. These two tones, brand new, these are 100 bucks. I did pay up a little bit for them. I do get 20% off, so it's like 20 bucks for these, but that's easy $40 flip um, plus shipping. So that's, that. you know, sometimes I question that, but because those were new or practically new, I'm not gonna list them as new, but uh, I feel pretty comfortable with that flip. It's a good brand too. Um, this is uh, Le Creuset, uh, I believe French. Um, it's a little scratched up over here, but the price was good. And this brand, I know the pots are hundreds of dollars. This is a solid brand, very desirable. I'm gonna have no problem flipping it, even with a little bit of wear on the bottom. I don't know what for. Uh, this is another game, board game, a little high in rank, but we can lower the price a little bit. It looks good, um, again. Looks can be deceiving, but $3.99, hopefully into at least $30. Uh, we got, this is just something I sort of knew in the box. It's a little messed up, so it'll probably do like new, but it hasn't, hasn't been used. The screws are all in plastic bags. $3.99, this is a $20, $25 flip on Amazon. Okay, so that's it for the games and electronics. Now we'll move on to some clothing. So I got three things from this brand. I never saw this brand before. I had to look it up. I'm learning clothing. But Gustin, Gustin is a great brand apparently. These, uh, these, are, these will sell very well. Uh, probably, hopefully, 40 bucks each for these pants. Um, I got it for 10 each plus shipping. So that's pretty good. This is one of my uh, favorite brands to flip or I'm still like kind of new, but I've sold already a lot of these. Foot Joy. Dry Joys by Foot Joy or Foot Joy. And this is a really, uh, it's kind of like a thicker vest. Really nice, easy flip. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, this is some, uh, I don't know if this would be considered vintage, but a little older. Nautica Competition Spell Out Jacket. I believe it's reversible, right? With the two-tone color on the other side. I don't know if there's a spell out on the, oh, look at that. That's really cool. So you want to look for spell outs on the sleeves and things like that. Um, they tend to sell for a lot more. This was ten ninety nine. I wouldn't be I would be surprised if we're not get at least forty to fifty dollars for this used. So um, one of the decent brand that you want to look out for is Scotch and Soda. So this is a little cardigan here. Scotch and Soda is a great brand, and this uh, was priced at three dollars and forty nine cents, which is very low for the savers in our area. And uh, that would be a great flip. And lastly, just a Guinness shirt. It was priced at $249. This is a probably easy $10 flip. Once in a while, I'll pick something up. Uh, I've sold before that. Uh, it's pretty good. Another one priced at $399. A nice Brooks Brothers. I uh, believe this is wool. Yeah, 53% wool sweater vest. Brooks Brothers is a great brand. And then we got a Orvis. Sweater vest as well. Now I'm only getting these because these are priced pretty well and they, they're, you know, pretty much guaranteed sales. So this is another Gustin shirt. This is a really, really feels like a nice high quality, you know, and the more you start doing clothing, the more you have a feel and a sense for quality stuff, 
so that the amount of stuff that you look up becomes less and less. And just two more things. Uh, I believe these are both polo. Here's a polo. I only got this regular because it was $3.49. So that's probably a $20 item. And then this as well, $3.99 is US Polo Assassin sweater. This is actually really nice. Not washed out at all. With black stuff, you gotta be careful. It's washed out a little bit. You gotta make sure it's an expensive brand and you still got a discount a little bit. So this is my haul for today. I like going out every day because the opportunities increase as you you go out every day there's more of a chance you're going to hit those home runs um so this was an okay day oh i just noticed this is coming up a little bit gotta cut those um this is an okay day i need to do this at least every day um usually i get i go around twice as long and uh yeah so you know it was kind of kind of a quick thing and i don't know what else to say really I'm trying to give you guys some helpful sourcing tips. The most important thing I can say is consistency, going every day, and going when people who are doing this part-time aren't there. So in the middle of the day, when everybody's at their nine to five, also when people at Savers are at their nine to five or working their day jobs and they're stocking the shelves and there's just a handful of people in the store, that's when you wanna go. That's when you wanna go because if you're going later at night, you know, they're putting stuff out all day and there's then a couple hours after let's say three four five o'clock when they're putting stuff out let's say you're going at night at seven or eight now potentially all the good stuff is gone or there's just a couple categories left the other thing is shopping in multiple categories gives me let's say there is no toys that day i might get some clothes let's say there's no clothes that day i might get some electronics i might get some vinyls you know at least this this gives you a better chance of getting home runs by doing multiple categories but you also got to be strict on your criteria for buying things as well. You don't wanna be buying junk in every category. If you're learning a new category, you're always gonna be buying junk in that category before you get to know it. And um, the one way to be very careful is by buying only stuff that's cheap. So if it's no good, then you can toss it. Yeah, you know, so, and that's actually the way I do it. I will never buy something expensive in a category unless I can literally guarantee the sale. Um, like if I found a Gucci sweater that I knew was legit, um, I would just pick it up, right? Regardless of whether I was selling clothing or not, if I came across that. But a brand like Gustin, I feel more comfortable now knowing the clothing category a little better to get into something like that for $10.99 or $11.99 because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. And then the other thing is knowing how to research things on the fly while you're at the store looking at eBay and not doing sold listings but doing completed listings so you can see the sell through as well, right? Just because you, you click on sold listings and it shows up with one sold, and you're like, wow, what if 20 didn't sell in one sold? Now your, your chances of selling that is like 5%, technically based on the sell through. So you don't wanna get stuck with those types of items, and so if you look at completed rather than sold, that'll help you and determine how fast you can sell something as well on the fly while you're at the store. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and for Amazon, there are apps. If you have bad service in an area, there are apps where you can download the entire database. Uh, I believe, I gotta get back, FBA Seller. That's how I get charged for it, but I don't know if that's the name of it, just FBA Seller. Anyway, there's an app, you can download the entire database. And so now when you go in scanning barcodes and you have horrible service, you can do that. Also, another tip, maybe at a library sale, a lot of libraries, they're in, you know, things are in the basement or deep in their building, you have no service. Usually they have Wi-Fi, connect to the Wi-Fi. So just a couple little things, kind of random, I know. Uh, there's so much information I want to share with you guys. I'm going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the haul. I'll see you next time.